Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. You don't really need to know much about me other than I've worked in long-term care for 27 years, and I've been so enriched by, by all of the relationships that have been developed throughout the years. Just wanted to find out from the audience, uh, where are you from today? Are you from long-term care, retirement, from community care, or from others? So can we just do a very quick raise of hands? Long-term care? Okay. Retirement? Community care? <laughs> and anybody else? Other. Excellent. Great. Okay. And uh, just to let you know what the online results are, it looks like 80% of people online are from long-term care and 20% other. So just a little bit about Victoria Manor. Victoria Manor is a municipal bee home located in Lindsay, Ontario, in the city of Kawartha Lakes. It's owned by the city of Kawartha Lakes. We have 164 residents who live in our home, and we also have two respite beds. Our home areas are comprised of four home areas with 40 to 42 residents per home area. Our home is managed by Sienna Senior Living. All of the employees within, C within our home are City of Kawartha Lakes employees. In 2015, we adopted the vision, mission, and values of Siena. Our home hopes to awaken the communities to the positive possibilities of life's next chapters through helping residents, families, and staff live fully every day. Our staff model the values of respect, passion, teamwork, responsibility, and growth. Victoria Manor is comprised of 185 team members. The years of service for our staff, we have 65% of our staff who have worked at Victoria Manor for 10 years or less. And the remaining 35% have worked in Victoria Manor for more than 11 years. It's incredible to think that over the past 10 years, we have had a combined turnover of directors of care, associate directors of care, and administrators. We've had a turnover rate of 17 people in 10 years. Just imagine the impact on our culture. So let's get started. In January 2016, a team of 30 staff and leadership met at our operational planning day. The theme of our operational planning day was communication. All of the events, activities, and teamwork and group work throughout the day was specifically focused on communication. Each year, our home provides the staff with an opportunity to provide leadership with feedback using an employee engagement survey tool. The tool looks at organizational climate, leadership, teamwork, communication, manager support, work environment. Our survey is completed online anonymously and in 2015, we had 84% of our employees complete the survey. At our operational planning day, we focused on the bottom four. These are the problems. With the assistance of a performance improvement facilitator, the participants at the operational planning day began to work on determining what was critical to quality to improve what we thought was communication. Participants were placed into groups and with the use of sticky notes began to work on writing ideas down. Wow, did we have a lot of sticky notes covering the walls. The sticky notes were then compiled and placed into themes. Then, a popular Lean Six Sigma tool called a matrix diagram was used to visually depict 
relationships between four groups of information. When the exercise was completed, the matrix determined that our key, critical to quality, was focused on relationships and knowledge, not on communication. From the chart, you can see that knowledge scored 216 points and relationships scored 192. We were able to identify our critical to quality. We then spent some time in groups working together to define the voice of the customer to capture the requirements and feedback from the customers to provide the customers with the best quality service. Since knowledge and relationships was determined what was critical to quality, these two were used. We focused on two customers, team members, and on leadership. In groups, we then began to define words and phrases that set standards and specifications for each critical to quality area. And then together, we conversed and had conversations around what team members and leadership had most in common. We determined that affirmation and acknowledgement, knowledge, relationships, tools and resources, communication, and caring about the quality of life for the residents was key most and in common. In February, at general staff meetings, we shared with team members the work that had been completed at our operational planning day. We reviewed the relationships and knowledge metrics, the voice of the customers, of team members, and of leadership, and spoke about the consensus that the group reached on our next steps, including looking at current processes, brainstorming on how we get there to determine where we want to be, now known as our willed future. In March, 20 interdisciplinary team members met for three hours to continue defining our willed future. We reviewed current processes, determined on how to get there, and to define where we want to be. Using the word willed future really implies ownership by all those working at Victoria Manor. To help us determine where we are now and where we want to be, we used a fishbone diagram, also called a cause and effects diagram, to provide a visualization for categorizing the potential causes of problems in order to identify its root cause. Once complete, the team members then group the sticky notes together into similar categories. These categories formed the foundation of our willed future. In May, 85 team members were scheduled throughout the day to attend a one and a half hour session to review the progress in defining our willed future. Team members had the opportunity to provide feedback, become involved, to determine our processes, and confirm and agree that these are the five categories of our willed future. As you can see, our willed future was categorized into people, resident-centered care, philosophy, information and technology, and building and equipment. Using the ideas generated in the work through January, March, and May, each category was then subcategorized with statements that the staff came up with of what defined our will to future and what it looked like when we reach it. The people category was subcategorized into recognition, communication, leadership, scheduling, recruitment, onboarding, orientation, and retention. Here are just a few examples of our willed future under the category people. Recognition, 
staff are acknowledged and have recognized, provided encouragement, and positive feedback. All staff perform their expected duties. Under communication, staff are consulted when decisions are made. Information boards are the same in every unit on every floor. Under leadership, managers are more visible and, on, and hands on, and there are a stable, consistent management team, and change is very rare. Under scheduling, staff want to know and see that we're fully staffed at the manor and we have the right resident to staff ratios. Under recruitment, onboarding, orientation and retention, a few of the examples include appropriate training for new staff and veteran staff, the right amount, right kind of training and a yearly refresh. And they want to see that new staff have a mentor. Under the philosophy category, the subcategories are values and wellness. Some examples under values include culture is supportive where staff support each other and staff know management has their backs and everyone works as a team. Under wellness, some examples include facilities exist to support a healthy lifestyle including an exercise and relations room, and that there's sufficient benefits and supports, and they are available for staff to support and sustain healthy staff. Under resident-centered care, the subcategories include resident experience and process. Some examples under resident experience include it is assumed that staff know their jobs and know the residents and their preferences. Uniforms are clearly identifying the roles and functions of each employee. Under process, sufficient time is available for charting information and for resident care. An appropriate notice is given when internal moves occur. Under information and technology, the categories are information and technology. Some examples include under information, communications will include computers and provide staff with more access. Open data policy, where budgets and information are accessible and staff are consulted for feedback. Under technology, Systems and pagers are available and hooked up to bed and chair alarms. And there's a backup system for reports. Under building and equipment, sense of arrival and supplies are the subcategories. Under sense of arrival, areas are clearly marked and easy to follow. And there is a clear system that identifies residents' names and units. Under supplies, tools and resources necessary and beneficial are available for each unit and systems are in place to know where supplies are and where they're required and where they're not. Have you ever had the opportunity to work with your team members to understand what they see, what their willed future is? For those of you who've had that experience, put up your hands. Okay, so about seven people. Online, it looks like for the most part that uh, about 67% of people are saying no, that, that they haven't. Okay, thank you. So throughout this time that we've spent working with the team, We've sought their feedback on an ongoing basis through evaluation forms. And some of the feedback from team members include having employees from all different areas, it's great to see different viewpoints. Content was significant and relevant. We learned that not just management, but all staff have to work fixing what is broken. And I feel empowered and heard.
for us, in our home, we've seen a significant number of benefits. We've seen an increase in resident satisfaction. We've seen a reduction in formal complaints, saving us an incredible amount of administration time, money, and follow-up. We've had an increase in formal compliments, including many residents now who come into our home not picking Victoria Manor as their first choice, but as their third choice, and spending some quality time with us and telling their families when another bed comes available, I don't want to leave. Our wait list has increased by 50%. And 80% of our team members actively participated in defining our willed future, so team members feel empowered and heard. We've already seen our willed future coming to fruition based on the scores of our 2016 resident satisfaction survey, family satisfaction survey, and our 2016 employee engagement survey results. The wonderful thing is that 100% of our team members, residents, and families will benefit when we reach our willed future. You may be wondering what the cost of all this is. In involving 140 team members, the total cost worked out to, per participant to $50, which is less than a one-day education workshop. As Abraham Lincoln says, the best way to predict your future is to create it. I'm happy if you'd ever like to get in contact with me to please feel free to email me. And I want to thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to present our willed future. Oh, thanks very much, Pam. It uh, sounds like you went through quite the process and uh, transformation at your home and really have built a uh, strong found foundation for culture change there. So thank, thank you. you for sharing that. And I'd like to, we have some time to open it up for any questions or comments from Pam. We just put it out there online now. Does anybody have anything they would like to ask? Christian. I'm just curious, with uh, being a municipally owned home, how is it dealing with the powers that be that sort of oversee the operation of the home from the city's point of view, from, you know, from your politicians or whoever it is that you have to answer to? So, um, do I have time? I can give you a little bit of background. Because we are a municipal home, this is public information, so I'm not sharing anything with you, then I shouldn't. Um, in 2012, an operational review was completed by the city of Kawartha Lakes. The home had a significant high WSIB rate. Resident satisfaction was at an all-time low. And there was really um, a lot of opportunities within the home. And in 2012, um, after the operational review, the city of Kawartha Lakes decided, council decided, to um, acquire the services of a management company to come in because they knew how to run a long-term care home. It's the only home in the city of Kawartha Lakes, the long-term care home. So having one home compared to maybe the city of Toronto, very different. So in 2012, an RFP was put out and the um, recipient of the award was um, at the time specialty care. So Sienna, um, now Sienna, certainly had the opportunity to, over the last five years, really demonstrate the power of change. There's been an incredible amount of, of change in terms of policies, procedures, direction. Um, and again, our results are showing. So every month we meet with Committee of Management, which is a, a group of councillors, and we meet every month to provide them with an update of where we're at with the home, the financials, our resident satisfaction, our family satisfaction, and what's happening with staff. So again, the results show. So um, this, the City of Kawartha Lakes is very happy and um, we continue to look forward to the relationship with Sienna for a long time. So 
I think it's so wonderful how you've included so many staff from diverse um, disciplines in your work. And I wondered if you've ever thought about including family members and residents um, as you move forward. Absolutely. We, we, we took a, um, a specific approach of, again, really developing relationships and, and supporting relationships with the staff, knowing that if we build that solid foundation, you'll see all of the results that you know, we've heard about today. And certainly this, this year, our operational planning day, we did invite family members, we did invite residents, and we did invite some community partners as well as we continue our journey. So the great thing is, is that um, right now our focus this year is around orientation and recruitment. And that based on the feedback from the staff in 2016, we absolutely needed to land. So we've got a, an action plan in place. Our long-term care equip is, is well on its way and certainly involving family members and, and residents in that process. It was great to, to hear and see um, you know, what they live with. And, and again, our, our residents are telling us based on the fact that they're, they're, not, um, they're not leaving, right? So we actually have somebody who's supposed to move out tomorrow and she had anxiety, I don't wanna go, and she's, she's staying, so that's happening so much more. And I'm so proud of the team. They've, they've been through a lot. They've been through 17 leaders, that's a lot. So we're very excited about our journey and, and the next phase of our journey, so thank you.